Hello, and welcome to part 18 of the new series in the Blender Game Engine. In this video, I'll be talking about randomness. Now, in the Blender Game Engine, there are two ways that you can create randomness. There is a random sensor and a random actuator, and we'll be looking at both of those in this video. Let's go ahead and dive in. I'll click on my splash screen to get rid of it. And the first thing I'll do is I'll change my render engine up here from the Cycles Render Engine over to the Blender Game Engine, which of course gives us access to playing in real time. And it changes our options over here in the Properties window. Uh, we're not going to be rendering out. We're going to be actually pressing Start and playing a game. We have a Timeline window down here, which I'll change. I'll actually make it taller, and I'll change it into a Logic Editor window. So I'll click down here on this button and I'll change it to a logic editor window. And of course, this gives us access to our sensors and controllers and actuators. And of course, I can scroll up and down to zoom in and out. I'm gonna go ahead and press N on my keyboard with my mouse in this window to hide that properties panel, which might be on the right side or left side of this window, depending on if you're on a PC or a Mac or a Linux computer. They just put it on different sides. I'm not really sure why, but I'll hide it with the N key on my keyboard. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the random sensor. And so I'm going to, with this cube selected, I'm going to add a sensor to it. It's going to be the random sensor right there. And all this sensor does is trigger true or false. Basically, it turns on whatever you have connected to it um, in either an on or off state. So it'll fire or it won't fire in a random fashion. So basically, it has a 50% chance of triggering on or not triggering at all, uh, depending on what you have connected to it. So uh, right now, I've just added it. I'm gonna add a motion actuator to this cube. So I'm gonna go to add actuator and we'll select motion. In this case, I'm just gonna have the cube randomly move to the right or positive on the X axis uh, randomly at certain intervals. So I'm gonna connect up this random sensor to the motion actuator. I'm gonna have it move, let's say on this first X axis, um, 0.05 and that's a positive number, so it'll move to the right. And so if I press P to play my game with a mouse in this window, you'll see that the cube sort of moves along and it's jittery. So it's not always moving, it's not moving um, smoothly, but it's sort of not moving sometimes and moving sometimes, I'll press escape. To emphasize this, I'm gonna enable trigger true pulse mode. And what that means is that I can actually have this sensor only try to fire every so often. This skip value refers to frames or the frame rate in Blender, which is um, 60 times per second. So if I type in 60 here, it's only gonna to try to fire either true or false uh, once per second. And what I actually might wanna do is change this seed value from zero, which apparently is not random, to a different number. I'll just click and drag and change it to some other random number. And I'll go ahead and I'll press P. And so now it'll sometimes move for a second and sometimes not move for a second. So you can see there it stopped, but it kept on moving at some points. And so it'll just kind of randomly move forward or, or stay still depending on what it's triggering, either true or false. So that's the random sensor. It's the least powerful of the two random logic bricks. Let's go ahead now and explore the random actuator. So I'm actually gonna delete this cube. I'll, with it selected, I'll press X on my keyboard and click on delete. This time, we're gonna use the random actuator and we're gonna be changing a property of an object. So I'm actually gonna add, I'll press Shift A to bring up my add menu. I'm gonna add a text object. And as you can see, when you add a text object, it puts it where your uh, 3D cursor is and it says the word text. You can edit that text by pressing tab with it selected and you get a cursor and you can miss backspace and you can type whatever you like. But in this case, we're gonna make a random number. So I'm gonna backspace all the way back to the beginning and I'll press zero and I'll press tab to go back into object mode. So this is a text object that just happens to say the number zero in it. And what I wanna do here is with it selected, I'm gonna open up my properties panel down here. So I'll press N or this little plus. Again, it could be on either slide depending on your computer. And I'm gonna add a text game property. And what this will allow me to do is actually control what my text says. That's what this text game property is with a value of my choice. Now, by default, the kind of information that the property of this text object wants to display is called a string which is just a word or character or a sentence. It doesn't have any value. If I change this, and you can see I have options here, to integer, an integer, if you think back to math class, is a number that does not have any decimal points. It's a whole counting number like one or two, or even a negative number like negative five, uh, but it can't be 
4 for instance. So I'm going to choose the integer and so now I'm going to use an always sensor and we're going to actually trigger uh, every second this number to change to a random number. So you'll actually see that on your screen happening in real time. So I'm going to add an always sensor to this uh, text object and we're actually going to have it only trigger once per second. So I'll enable true level triggering there and I'll type in 60 there. That's once per second. Let's go ahead and add the random, and it's right there, the random actuator. And here we actually get access to a property to assign a random value. And that's why we actually added a property over here. It's just called the text property. So I'll click in here and select text, and I'll connect up my always sensor to the random actuator. Now, this is where we actually going to choose what random property or the range of random values we want to be possible to assign to this property, the text property of the text object. In this case, we don't want a bool constant. We want, in this case, uh, to define a range of numbers between, let's say, uh, 1 and 10 to randomly assign to this text object. So I'm going to actually choose int uniform and that will actually give me uh, a min and max value in this same logic brick and I'm going to assign it uh, a range between 1 and 9. Okay, so it'll be a random choice between 1 and 9 and that'll happen once per second because we've enabled this true level triggering with a skip of 60. Let's go ahead and I'll actually make this a little bit uh, narrower so you can see all the logic bricks and I'll press P and you're actually going to see the text object change once per second. So 5, 2, 6, 5, and it actually stayed 5 for a few there and of course it's just cycling through numbers so that's how you can make a random number appear on your screen. So I'm going to, with this text object selected, I'll delete it because we're not going to use that anymore. I'm going to actually make an example of where things would fall on the screen from the top of the screen down randomly, like something that is randomly raining from the top of the screen. In this case, I'm going to make it so that you have a game where bricks are randomly falling from the top of the screen. And so I'm going to set up my scene a little bit. I'm going to select my camera and I'll press Alt-R to clear its rotation and Alt-G to clear its location. So Alt-R and Alt-G to put the camera back at the middle and pointing downwards. I'm going to move it up a little bit so it's pointing at the ground and with the camera selected still, I'm going to change the camera property over here in the properties window to be a orthographic camera which means kind of like a two-dimensional camera and I'll move it up actually some more so it's above the ground. So now I have basically a two-dimensional camera for a two-dimensional game. I'm going to go and press um, zero on my numpad to go into the camera view and I'll press shift C to put that 3D cursor back in the middle of the scene. Actually it broke out of the camera. Uh, but Shift C will put your 3D cursor back in the middle of the scene. I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to add a mesh uh, cone because I'm actually going to make a, a spawning object. Now if you've not seen my video on how to create spawning, I'll put a link to that up in the top right corner. If you tap or click on that little eye, you'll see a link to a few different videos including this entire video series and the spawning video. Okay, let's go ahead and put this uh, spawning object up in the top corner, but I'll make it smaller. So I'll tap S to make it smaller. I'll click and then I'll press G to grab it and put it right up there. Eventually we will put it up above the top of the screen, but for now we want to see it, so I'll put it right there. Now we want to make a brick that's going to fall when it gets spawned at a random time. And then we'll place these spawning objects across the screen and above the top of the screen so that we'll have kind of random falling bricks at random locations at random intervals of time. So I'm going to make this uh, spawning object have a property. So I'm going to add a game property to it. And we're going to make sure it has a name. I'm going to call it Fred. Why not? We want to make a number. So I'm going to change string to integer. And basically what we'll be doing here is we'll be making a chance. So let's say this number has a range that it can be randomly from 1 to 5. Well, only when the number, this property Fred, is 3, that will be when a brick falls. Every second, this Fred value will change to a different number, randomly 1 to 5, but only when it's 3 will it trigger a brick to fall by spawning that new object. So the first thing I'm going to do is with this cone selected and with a property made named Fred, I'm going to add an always sensor. So I'll click on add sensor and always. And I'm going to enable a true level triggering by clicking on the first three little dots. And I'll type in 60 to make it once per second. 
Now, once every second, I want this Fred value to get a new random value between one and five. So I'll add a random uh, actuator. So where is it? It's right there. And we want to select again, uh, int a uh, uniform. And so we get uh, access to min and max values. In this case, I'll choose one and five as the min and max. And the property again must be this same one that we just made called Fred. Let's go ahead and connect those up. So now, once per second, Fred becomes a random value between one and five. And so now I'm gonna add a property sensor and it's gonna look to see if Fred is actually equal to three. So I'll add a property sensor. I wanna check to see if Fred is equal to three. And if that is true, I wanna make a new spawn of a new brick object. I haven't made that yet, but I'm gonna actually add that edit object. It's the edit object um, actuator and I'll connect them up. What we'll be doing is we'll be creating a new brick and we'll be adding it here, but I'll go ahead and make that brick now. I'll press Shift A on my keyboard to add a mesh cube. I'll tap S to scale it down and then maybe I'll make it tall. So I'll tap S and then Y to make it taller. And uh, what I actually have to do is apply the scale of my objects. This cone by default was much bigger. And so if I try to make a spawned object from it, that spawned object will be scaled up. It'll be the original scale proportionally to the cone, I believe. So just to be safe, I'm gonna do with both of these selected one at a time, I'll go to object and apply and rotation and scale. So I'm applying the rotation and scale of that object. Same thing here with the brick object, apply, and rotation, and scale. And so now, it's brick to always be falling. So I'm gonna add an always sensor to the brick. Um, there it is right there. And I'm gonna add an always motion, and I'll connect it up. And so now I'm gonna change its location on the um, local Y axis, or in this case, we're only just displaying um, global, so we'll change it to local. It's the same because I apply the rotation and scale. Um, we want it to go down on the negative y axis, so x, y, z. I'll type in negative 0 0.05 and press enter. So now if I press P to play my game, that brick will fall. But of course, when you're making a spawning object, you want it to be hidden. In fact, it needs to be hidden in a different layer. So I'll press M with my brick selected to bring out this move to layer pop-up, and I'll select this lower layer. So now the spawned object is down here in this kind of um, hidden layer and now with the cone selected we have every time Fred is equal to three it's going to spawn a new object it's going to spawn that cube we didn't name it properly but that's okay and that should work let's go ahead and try it out uh, with my mouse in this window I'll press P and as you can see it's only spawning a new brick once in a while uh, not every single second not every other second, but it's pretty random. I'll go ahead and press escape. If you wanna change the odds, what you can do is you can change the min and max value and the value that you're looking for to actually make the brick fall. If I change min and max to let's say one and 10, there will be a far less likeliness that a brick would fall because there are 10 choices now, one through 10. Uh, and three would be a very much less likely uh, occurrence. Of course, I could change this equal to less than or greater than, and I could say any value greater than six would make a brick fall. So now hopefully bricks would be more common now when I press P to play the game. And as you can see now, we've had a few bricks fall and they're falling uh, more regularly than before. So I'll go ahead and press escape. That's great. What I can do now is I can move this uh, spawning object up above the top of the screen and I'll press Shift D on my keyboard to duplicate it and I'll tap X to make it move only left and right and I'll move one maybe right there and I'll select both of them and duplicate them uh, and so Shift D and then X. Actually, what I might wanna do if I want these bricks to actually hurt my character in the game, if it hits me, is I'm gonna go back to my uh, other layer and I'll select the brick and I'll give it a game property uh, called brick. So now if you're familiar with how to do collisions, which again, you can check out the link to my tutorial series and the video on how to do um, hitting bad guys is in this tutorial playlist. Um, you'll know that you need a property that you can actually identify uh, on your character. So if your character hits anything with the property brick, uh, you might die or lose a life or something like that. 
Let's go ahead and go back to our main game and duplicate the spawning object. So Shift D and then X, and I'll select both of them, Shift D and X, and Shift D and X. And maybe I'll just duplicate all of these now, uh, just like that, Shift D and then X, and put the rest of them right about there. And so now if I play my game, I've got some random falling bricks. What you might want to do, you'll notice they're all kind of falling at the same time, is you might want to give them all different seeds. So if I select one of them and I change my randomness um, actuator and I change the seed of each different one, uh, they'll all fall at different times and that's of course probably uh, what you want. It's very hard for a computer to actually create a random number like a human can because a human can think emotionally and can kind of draw from past experiences uh, where a computer kind of has to deal with it uh, in a much more mathematical way. So. Uh, there we go, I'm changing them all to something different. And I'll go ahead and press P, and as you can see, only some of them are firing at any given time. Again, in this case, there is a chance whenever you have uh, a seven or eight or nine or 10 value uh, for each of these spawning objects, a uh, Fred value, that a brick will fall. Now, if you wanna make this more random, because as you can see, they're falling down kind of uh, all in a row, but only some of them are randomly firing bricks. What you might wanna do is change this skip interval um, to make it so that each one of them is not operating on that same one second uh, interval. So you can change some of them, let's say, to a 45 tick interval or a 50 tick interval or a, let's say, 72 tick interval. And that way you'll get some more randomness in there and not always have the same kind of line of bricks falling. I'll go ahead and press escape. And that has been an introduction to randomness in the Blender Game Engine. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like this. Go ahead and check out my Facebook page at facebook.com slash borncg. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.